Alright, so we're back here with another video, and in this video I'm going to show you how to install a Pearson valve on a refrigerator to put Freon in the cooling system. If you don't mind, if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me, we'll go ahead and get started. Alright, so before we get started here, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and unplug this appliance. We'll have to plug it back in here shortly in the video we'll go ahead and unplug that so what you're going to do is you're going to go around the back of your refrigerator here depending on your make and model some samsung's have phillips head most of them will be a quarter inch bolt holding the back cover here on so what we're doing right now is we're just going to go around the back of it we're going to loosen these bolts here Alright, so once you've got your bolts loose, you can go ahead and take your cover off. So once you've got your cover off, let me go ahead and grab the valve real quick and I'll be right back and we'll show you how to do this. Alright, so I'm back here. We've got your Pearson valve. You go ahead and open that up. Comes with, this one comes with three different fittings. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take this thing out of the packaging. comes with an Allen wrench to open that to the part that pierces the valve. So what we're going to do at this point, what we're going to do right now, is we're going to find out which one of these three right here we need for the refrigerator. Alright, so you can see this one right here is too big, so that's not the correct size that we're going to need. This one right here, you can see there's absolutely no space around it, so this is going to be the size that we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to loosen these three screws around the piercing valve itself to open the actual valve itself up, separate it. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and sit this down in this groove. It's got a little groove right there on both sides. And you'll lock in. Go ahead and put that around and whenever we're placing this valve you want to place it to where you can get to all your bolts and where you can get to the valve itself to put the freon in All we're doing right now is playing with cobwebs. No, I'm just no, all we're doing right now is tightening these three bolts up right here. We'll continue our process. I like to tighten all three of these at the same time so that one's not getting tighter than the other and it's evenly going around the compressor tube right there I haven't completely tightened mine yet so what I'm going to do right now at this moment is I'm going to position it exactly how I'm going to want it because here in a second I'll have these three bolts where they're right around the tube and I'll start to snug each one up right now I'm just going around each one and making sure they're evenly going down against the tube there.
right now, like I said, we're just going to go around it and evenly tight it each time. Tighten each side. You don't want to snub one whole side down and then tighten the other ones down. That's not what, what we want to do there. See now that it's getting secure, what I'm going to show you real quick. Right now, like I said, we're just going to go around it and evenly tight it each time. Tighten each side. You don't want to snub one whole side down and then tighten the other ones down. That's not what, what we want to do there. see now that it's getting secure what I'm gonna show you real quick all right so what I'm gonna show you here is as I'm going around this valve here you'll see it completely closed really tight around that compressor tube right there shut there and that's what we want we want a complete seal around that tube there these are really these sub close piercing, piercing valves are really really good really really good so like i said all i'm doing right now is going around all three of these bolts and we're going to make sure this whole piercing valve is shut just like that right there I'll get some of these refrigerators that are used where they didn't put the free on them like they should. Or they didn't close the valve all the way or didn't tighten it all the way. It makes a difference. trim so you don't want to make a mistake with this. You want to make sure you got ready to work with everything. So now that we've got that on there, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug this refrigerator back in real quick. So after we've had your refrigerator running for about five minutes, what you're going to do now is you're going to take your Allen wrench, or some of them come with the star wrench, and go ahead and take that cap off. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this piercing valve all the way shut so that it pierces a hole inside that tube right there to put the Freon in. So once we've got that all the way to where you can tell it's pierced, what we'll do is we're going to open it up about two and a half turns. You can hear the air start to come out as we're opening it. What we're going to do is you'll have to get your fittings. You buy these separately. You screw it on right there. All right, so once you've got this screwed on here, what we're going to do is you're going to go you can go to your local hardware store anywhere like that 
your uh, auto parts store and you can get your gauge here. What we're going to do is we're going to clamp this gauge here on here. And you'll see it drop. It drastically, immediately drop down, which means this thing is very low on Freon. So what we'll do is you're going to do this. You're going to want to do this in intervals and then short burst a little at a time and come back to it. What I like to do is I like to shake it upside down for a few seconds and then I'll shut it off and we'll let that run through the system. We'll come back after a few minutes of it running and we'll put some more in it. Alright, so I've been letting it run for about five minutes and you can see it's dropped back down to zero. So we're going to send a little bit more through the lines like I said I like to hold the gun upside down and shake it while we're doing it I usually like to do this a total of two, two or three times at least. And then after the third time, I'll leave it running a full 24 hours and then I'll come back and I'll open the valve back up and we'll check it then and make sure you want it to be between five and eight pounds of pressure. You see where the 10 mark's at right now. We'll come back just a few minutes after we let it run for about five more minutes. Alright, so you can see we've dropped back down below zero, so we got this thing was completely empty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pump some more through real quick. So right now we're just whenever I pump it, I usually don't go out of the end range mark. I try to keep it between the end range mark so that when it drops back down it drops down accordingly. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna let it run for another five, ten minutes. We'll come back to it and we'll check out where it's at. Alright, so we're back. You can see it's dropped below zero. Like I said in the video at the beginning, this refrigerator here was completely out of Freon. There was not even no air or nothing in it. Alright, so I also I want to mention I've been doing this video in intervals. This is usually between a 20 and a 30 minute process and like I said, I would like, I always like to come back a full 24 hours later and make sure it's still where we need it, want it to be. This is always, this, this process is better to take your time than go fast, okay? Alright, you can see where we're still at about 25 pounds and I'm going to let it run for another 5 minutes and I'll come back to it. Alright, so this time you can see, it's not completely zero, it's probably at about 2 pounds, but we're going to go ahead and send some through real quick one more time this last time made just do it minutes and we'll come back to it guys all right so we're back and I've let it run for at least 10 to 12 minutes and you can see it's a little it's a little low you want it between five and eight pounds of pressure so I'm gonna hit it one more time it should be just right all right so we got back guys you can see it's holding right where we want it at five pounds between five and eight pounds so what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pop this off we're going to shut this piercing valve completely shut. You want to make sure this is completely tight because you don't want any leaks coming out. Make sure it's real snug real quick. Alright, so what we'll do now is we'll take this off. And each valve comes with a little cover. 
the another seal down on the inside there. We're gonna put it right here. Make sure this is real tight. What we're gonna do now is we'll go ahead and grab our cover. Thanks for watching.